Hello, and welcome to a special report on the Skathi Kethane Minor Mission Around the Moon. For its first two days around the moon, the mission spent its time detecting Kethane in a small belt in an inclined orbit around the moon, certainly not covering the entire moon, really only uh, perhaps as much as 1% of the surface. But that was sufficient for Mission Control to then proceed to spend an extra day to examine the results and to select the landing spot for the Skathi Cathay Minor. And uh, here you see the orbit sped up about a hundred times real speed. This is of course a simulated view as the Skathi Cathay Minor did not have a camera on board nor any camera drones. But in any case, the Cathane Detection Orbiter will remain in orbit and so the first thing that had to happen was the separation of the orbiter. It uh, extended its solar panels, uh, ensured that communication was good, and then once all that was done and communication was secure, the separation occurred. That left the lander free to continue to the surface with its booster or if you will first descent stage now and so it uh, kept a safe distance from the orbiter though still on the same orbit that uh, separated from the orbiter it began its descent burn. The, the booster stage with the Estes engine uh, took about eight minutes and burned intermittently because it was attempting to aim for a particular cathane spot and so there were multiple burns necessary, it was not a single continuous burn, but the SS engine is capable of multiple relights. One of the complications was that the landing could not be uh, uh, an ideal landing, and that is because of the communication situation. The spot selected uh, gave enough time for the landing to occur, but not an ideal landing, so the mission control decided to uh, go for a high approach so that the lander would use the booster stage, the Estes stage, uh, at an altitude of roughly 40,000 meters. And that's why you see the orbiter, or I, excuse me, the lander angling up. And that is because it wants to maintain altitude through this stage. Again, this is to ensure that it hits the cathane patch. Uh, without uh, losing communication. There was of course a signal delay of uh, roughly 1.5 seconds and so that also complicated the landing. However, the booster stage performed ad admirably and uh, here we see it continue to to bring the the lander to a safe velocity so that the lander's own engines could take over. The lander's own engines were RD eight five sixes. These are vernier thrusters used in the uh, cyclone rocket. I believe I mispronounced that in the in the earlier video on the launch, a cyclone rocket. During this long burn I'd like to address an issue that's cropped up with uh, some person or persons impersonating uh, myself, the public human liaison for the EDB, the agency, and so I would like to say that if you receive any any um, demeaning or otherwise inappropriate messages that obviously do not come from uh, this agency, uh, make sure to mention it to us as well as to YouTube. In many cases this is simply an account impersonating uh, this, uh, this actual channel and so pay attention to you can click on the icon or the name of the person to see whether it's actually coming from this channel or some impersonating channel uh, please make sure to tell us if that occurs alright so here we see the SS engine out and we wait for the booster separation And there you have it, quite a long coast between the engine being out and separation considering this is a time of landing, the, the lander now descending. And there we have the lighting of the RD-856s and presumably also soon the extension of the landing gear.
And there you have it, a rather simple lander. You'll note that the solar panels have been retracted prior to this phase of the landing. One of the complications that led to the high approach was that the RD 856s do not throttle. Unlike typical descent engines that you might expect, they have no throttling. They do have multiple relights. So what had to happen was that these rockets had to be used in bursts. And that caused an additional compl uh, complication that uh, led to the decision to make a high approach. Unfortunately, one of the other complications was that uh, even though it had many relights, it had a limited supply of hypergolic fluid with which to use to light the engines. And uh, we now believe that this was not properly programmed into the computer, though uh, we are still looking into whether that constraint was actually taken into consideration in the programming. So we see here the, the lander continuing to make its descent. Because of the high altitude of the approach, it was quite a long descent. Again, aiming directly at the cathane patch. And here it's completely upright, simply going straight down. This was roughly uh, 3,000 to 5,000 meters above the surface. And so you see burst after burst from the engines progressively slowing it down. This was the second to last burst. And then came time for the final burst and we see that one engine lit but the other engine did not. Prior to the lander failing uh, collapsing on impact. That final burst was of course critical if the lander was only roughly 10 meters above the ground at that point and it needed to slow down in order to make a soft touchdown. However, uh, we suspect that for some reason the hypergolic fluid ran out in one engine but not the other. We can't understand why that would be though because obviously both engines should have had uh, access to the same amount of hypergolic fluid, but that's the only theory that the EDB has for the failure of this mission at this time. But uh, investigations will be pursued. Needless to say, this is a tremendous setback for the EDB and its hopes to use this mission to justify building a much larger rocket, the Saturn C4X. But uh, all they have to show for their effort now is uh, a debris field, but also the cathane detection orbiter. So the mission isn't a complete loss, but uh, certainly a great disappointment. But the EDB will continue to plunge ahead with uh, its missions, and so we hope you will uh, join us for all of those. The EDB does not give up so easily on simply a single failure like this, and the record of successes have been tremendous. So, so uh, tune in for future broadcasts of EDB missions, and uh, we hope you will enjoy those. And with that, this is DDB signing off.